Alright, what's up guys, today we're doing a video on how to dual boot Windows 10 and Linux Mint 18.1. So first of all, what you want to do is open up your web browser and head over to this site, which I'll be linking in the description, and scroll down until you find option 2, which is here, and download the turn off fast startup bat. This will disable fast startup, which is necessary if you want to dual boot well, Windows with Linux. Simply open up the folder where it's downloaded, right click it, press run administrator, hit yes, and it'll run and it's done. Now we can move on to the next step. Go to linuxmint.com and click on the download button up here and wait for it to load. And then after that's done, you'll be greeted with the Linux Mint download area and you can either choose the Cinnamon or Mate desktop environment, any of the 32 or 64 bit flavors. Uh, so click whatever one you, you need if you have a 32 bit or 64 bit computer or you like Mate or Cinnamon. Um, Cinnamon is probably the most popular one to use with Linux Mint. However, Mate is a, also a very good desktop environment. You can simply do like a quick Google search to see what both look like and see what one you might like to choose. So once you've downloaded both of those, you want to um, create a bootable USB stick or CD drive, uh, CD rather. Um, and the way to do that, uh, if you already know how to do it, you can go and do it now yourself, or you can follow my tutorial, which I'll have an annotation on screen now, or a link in the description if you're on mobile, so you can learn how to create a bootable USB stick yourself. All right, so once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to open up the start menu and you want to type in disk mgmt.msc and then you want to click the top one here. And this is the Windows Disk Management where we're going to shrink the partition so we've got some space to install Linux Mint onto. So what you're looking for is something looking similar to this and you want to look for your C drive, which is where Windows will usually be installed. And you want to right click on that and click shrink volume. And then after it's finished creating the disk for shrinkable space, uh, you'll be brought with a brought up box like this and you want to type in the number in megabytes uh, how big you want your Linux uh, installed to be. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to leave it at uh, 15,000 megabytes, which is 15 gigabytes. So that's 15,000. Good way to work this out is to take the number of gigabytes you want, times it by 1,000, and then type it in there and press shrink. After that's finished, you'll have a, uh, an area of unallocated space, and that means it's worked successfully. You can now close out disk management, and this is probably one of the most difficult steps of the whole thing. You want to plug in your USB or, or CD, which you're going to boot from, and to your computer, and you want to restart, and you want to find a way to boot from that rather than the hard drive. It's different for every computer, so you'll probably have to go into the BIOS and change the boot order or something that, like that. Um, but once you've worked it out, um, which I can't unfortunately show you because it's different for every computer, like I said, uh, you'll be able to boot into Linux Mint. So I'm going to uh, restart my computer now, and I'll show you once I'm there. All right, so once you reboot your computer, you'll be probably greeted with something like this if it all worked, and that means Linux Mint has been booted off of the memory stick or uh, CD drive, and it will begin to load into the uh, installer and operating system. And you'll get this screen, which says Linux Mint 8.1, and you'll get this screen, which says Linux Mint 18.1, with a little th uh, four-dot loading bar to show you that it is actually doing something. And all you've got to do now is simply wait for it to load. And once it's finished loading, you'll be greeted by a screen which looks something similar to this, depending on what desktop environment you chose, either Cinnamon or Mate. What you want to do is head over to the Install Linux Mint icon here and double click on it. And then once the install is open, you want to choose your language. I'm going to choose English and hit Continue. And then once that's done, you'll want to choose if you want to install third party software or not. Usually, if you plan to use this as just a normal standard computer, you definitely want to have this on because it'll install important codecs and stuff like that, and hit continue, but the choice is yours. And then after that's done, you'll be greeted by the installation type screen. You can just click Install Linux Mint alongside Windows 10, but just in case this doesn't come up for you, I'm going to show you how to do it manually. But if this does come up for you, safest option and quickest option is to just keep it on Install Linux Mint alongside Windows 10 and click Install Now. But otherwise, click on something else if this doesn't come up for you and hit Continue. All right, so here's where we're going to be creating the partitions to install Linux Mint onto. Here's the free space, which we freed up in Windows earlier. Um, what you want to do is you want to click on the free space and click the little plus symbol down here. And you'll want to type in um, the amount of uh, space you want to use as a swap area. Swap area is essentially like an area on your hard drive or SSD where the computer will use if it runs out of um, RAM to use, and it will just use that as like a backup. So a good number to use is either the same amount as RAM you have, or 1.5 or 2 times more. So since we have 3 gigs of RAM in this computer, I'm going to type in 3072 megabytes, which is 3 gigabytes, and you want to change the use as to swap area, 
and then you could choose your settings, uh, these your settings yourself, but I recommend keeping it on logical and beginning and hit OK. After that's done, you want to click on the free space again of what's remaining of it and click the plus symbol again down here and leave that default and change this to mount, change this mount point here to a forward slash, leave that on ext4 journaling file system, leave these all default, or you can keep it on primary logical. I'm going to change mine to primary just because that's what I usually do, but the choice is yours and simply hit OK. Wait for it to create the partition. And that's your Linux Mint root partition created. You can now click on this area here, the ext4 forward slash uh, mount point one, and make sure you click on that before clicking install now, and then click it. And then it'll ask you if you want to write the changes to disk, simply press continue. And then once that's done, you have to select where you are. So I'm going to uh, leave it default because that's where I am. And here's where you choose your keyboard layout. I'm going to use English UK because that's what I'm used to. And here's where you set up your uh, account details. So your name, I'm going to leave mine as Adam. Your computer name, you can call that anything. I'm just going to call this dual boot. Uh, username, Adam again, choose a password. Um, and here's where you can choose to either log in automatically or require the password when you first turn the computer on. Probably a good idea to leave it on require a password, otherwise anyone can just turn your computer on and just access your computer. And then you have a choice or not to encrypt your home folder. I'm not going to do that though, just for the sake of this tutorial. Simply hit continue and wait for it to load. And it will begin copying the files. You can click the little arrow down here to see what's going on. And it will show you in depth more what's going on with, with the uh, Linux Mint installation. And then you can click the little arrow here and you can look up some tips and tricks with um, Linux Mint. Get, get to know the uh, OS a little bit more before you finish installing it. And then it's simply a case of waiting for it to install now. And I'll be back when it's done. All right, and after the installation finishes, it will say installation complete. You can continue to use it now just to uh, look around or you can um, restart your computer now and boot into the Grub bootloader and choose whether you want to boot into Linux or you want to boot into Windows. So I'm gonna click restart now and I'll show you the Grub bootloader. After your computer reboots, you'll be greeted by the Grub bootloader and you can choose to boot into Linux Mint 18.1 or boot into Windows 10 there. So I'm going to boot into Linux Mint 18.1 and show that it works. All right, once Linux Mint loads, you want to click on your username you want to uh, log into. So I'm going to click into the account we created when we were setting it up and type in your password. And then you have it, Linux Mint 18.1 dual booted alongside Windows 10. All right, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.